did you know that the Roland D50 could sound like that? Really thick and warm and glorious uh, and not just digital PCM stuff. Did you know it could do these sorts of awesome modern baseline sounds? And what if we wanted to go really cinematic? We wanted to open the sound up and go kind of glitchy and modern, sort of dystopian with it. Hey, I'm Vulture Culture, and this is the Roland D50 from 1987, along with a PG-1000 programmer from the same year. Tonight, we're going to be making some sound design live, show you guys how to actually make your own patches. And this will work with the software as well as the hardware and also synthesizers like the JD-800 or the boutique synthesizers like the uh, JD-08 because all a LA synthesizers have about the same architecture. So I'm Vulture Culture. It's an amazing synth and I'm really excited to get this going. So I want to ask you guys for some requests. What types of sounds you would like me to design because I did a three hour video discussing every single parameter in the D50 and how it all works, explaining mysterious things like chase and bias and structure, all the stuff that's sort of unique to the D50 that even if you're used to synthesizers can be a little bit mind bending at first. Hopefully I did a good job breaking all that down. But tonight we're going to be making our own stuff, a Moog bass. Well, I actually have already made a couple of sounds for this synth and I have this patch here, which is called Source Bass, which was inspired by my Moog Source that I have right behind me. And you can hear that this thing can sound absolutely monstrous. Really huge, really beefy, really uh, analog, actually. It, it sounds much warmer. Uh, when we did a shootout between all of my vintage Roland synths, this one sounded the warmest, actually, next to something like the JX3P or something that is an actual analog. They got something right about this era of virtual analog synthesis. So, but we can show how to actually do that. So we got Moog bass, strings, has PCM waveforms. Those work well for that. Always love deep bass sounds. But I, well, so with all the sounds that I've showed so far, I believe none of them actually are even using the PCM samples, which is really powerful. Um, yeah, so it's definitely capable of some really good stuff. Why don't we start with um, the first request was Moog bass here. So we can do a different kind of baseline sound. And so what I will do is go to just an initialized patch. And the first thing to know about how the D50 works is the initialized patch just loads up that sort of dirty piano sound, right? And you can hear that the sample is stretched across the, it's just one sample stretched across the keyboard. So if I play this note, if I play it two octaves lower, it'll play back four times lower because it's just stretching out the sample. And you'll notice that the sample two octaves up is very short, right? It's a very short sample compared to that. So one thing about this is it's a, you know, immediately you're hearing that gritty 8-bit sort of character. Um, so the first thing to do is select upper and lower. I'm going to put the synth into dual mode. So what that just means is we're using both the upper and the lower tones here. And we have to pick a structure. So a structure in the D50 is a lot like the algorithms in the DX7. And they tell the synthesizer what is going on, how to interpret uh, if it's going to be virtual analog synthesis or PCM samples. Now on a real D50, it actually has it printed right here for you on it. Um, and you can see structure one is 
a sample or I'm sorry, a synthesis and synthesis, meaning that if I just go to structure number one, which is this slider, because I have common select selected, we're going to be going to structure and we can just set that to one. And now we'll be hearing a square wave, but it's a little muted. And the reason is, is because it is, uh, the cutoff frequency is down. So now we need to go to our partial select because the cutoff frequency is in cream here. The PG-1000 is color coded really well. Everything that's cream is per partial. There's four partials to a sound. And then the upper partials and the lower partials each share common parameters, which are in neon teal here. And so the LFOs, pitch modulation, uh, EQ and chorus are common to the tones. So you could use, you know, a certain chorus setting on the upper tone, but have it be different than the lower tone. And then the uh, reverb and a few other settings are patch based and those are in red. So already we're going to, we're going a little fast here. Another really big thing is I did the video covering it, links in the description. However, please ask questions. If I'm going too fast or you don't understand something, let me know because I've been digging so deep into the D50 that it's very easy to fly past some of the stuff. Uh, I want to hear a patch that as you were learning the capabilities of it inspired you to do something you haven't done with any other synth. Okay, so I can show that actually really quick. Um, so we'll go back to this patch in a second and pick up where we left off. Um, I think it's, uh, if I go to patch bank one, here we go. Uh, so this one, uh, Sopaveda Seawall, named after the Blade Runner 2049 location, uses LFOs that are synced to the key strikes that are slightly out of tune with each other. And so I created this sort of almost like cyberpunk uh, electric piano sound. I'll let you guys hear it and then you can tell me what you think, okay? So it has this almost like granular synthesis sort of feel to it. And I was inspired to do this patch because it uses the fact that you've got six LFOs per patch and they can be key synced, which is something you can't do with a lot of analog synths, but it's still using that sort of warm uh, analog ish sound that the D50 does so well. And I think it can just be very beautiful. And uh, can we get more light on the PG-1000? It's a little dark. So when I'm standing in front of it, there's not a lot I can do, unfortunately. Um, it's, uh, it's a little bit of a dark studio, unfortunately. So I'll try to maybe move this light a little bit over. We'll see if I can do something about that. Give it a little bit more something or another there. Uh, not a lot that I can do while I'm standing here. I'll try to stand back to make sure that there's a little bit there. Um, P PG-1000 is in the dark side of the moon. Yeah, so it's just there. I think if I stand forward, it gets bad. But if I stand back, you guys can see it a little bit, bit, bit better, hopefully. Can you guys see this a little bit? Uh, let me know if that's better. Anyways, going back to what we were up to, here's our initialized patch again. Is that better, guys? Am I, like, out of the way? Okay, good. So what we're going to do is we've got our common select selected here. We need to go to structure one. That's going to give our square wave. We're going to go to key mode on the D50 and just move that over to dual really quick. So that's telling the D50 um, to split the polyphony down to eight, uh, eight voices, but that gives us all four partials per sound, which is important because we want to use everything we've got here. Um, I would love that if he was proud of me. That would be amazing. Um, so the first thing to do is we're going to select all four of our partials. I'm sorry. First thing we're going to do is go to partial balance here with the common select on and go to 50-50. Just so we're hearing uh, all of the partials and then we'll partial select everything and then bring the cutoff frequency up. 
and I'll bring the level down. So the amplifier is here, so I'm just gonna bring the level down a bit. And you'll notice there's a problem. One of the oscillators is tracking the keys, but the rest of them, the other ones are not, right? So key follow is up here for the pitch. It's useful sometimes for certain sounds to not actually follow the pitch of the keyboard. So we can set that to one and now everything, and you'll see that up here, we've got all four of our partials. Um, you can see what each one of them is doing. So now we can hear that all of the partials are following the key, but th the keys, but we could actually change that so they go twice as high, you know, and get weird effects depending, especially with the samples, it can be useful. Um, Yes, Eric Persing and Adrian Scott also programmed a lot of the sounds for the Roland D50, so he, he, he should get credit there too. A little bit less of a big personality like Eric Persing has, uh, but really did some really good stuff. Um, so anyways, what we can do is, what, what's happening right now is because these are all red, we're controlling all four partials at once, and you'll notice they sound a little bit weird. You're getting like weird cancellation and that's because they're very tightly tuned. If you hold this button down that says partial mute, we can actually turn off certain partials. So now we're just listening to the upper two partials. That's better. We can just control one partial and adjust the fine tuning a bit. So we can start to uh, create a little bit of detune sound. which is already sounding a lot better. Um, to create a baseline sound, we could go either sawtooth or square wave. In this case, why don't we go sawtooth with it? And you can definitely hear a little bit of grittiness as we approach the low end there. But it sounds really good. Um, for what it's worth, you can actually use pulse width modulation on the sawtooth wave, but it's not true pulse width modulation, like on the AX60 or the Alpha Juno series. It's like an octave up. So if I move this, you'll hear. Maybe you'll hear it if I'm playing a higher note. If I select both, you'll be able to hear it better. the uh, coarse tuning here all the way down to C2 so we can get that really low end um, so we're just using these upper two partials right now we'll worry about the lower partials later once we've got a sound that we really like so the first thing we want to do is maybe adjust the cutoff frequency so we're getting that that sexual bump down there if you're listening on a phone or something, you're not gonna hear this. You're gonna need some good speakers. I'm gonna increase the envelope depth and the envelope velocity to add a little bit of responsiveness. I like these at about 50% a lot of the time because the envelope velocity above that becomes a little extreme and I don't want it to go too crazy. And you'll hear not much has changed and that's because we have to adjust these settings. Real quick, we are dealing with a six stage envelope. So for the time variant filter, TVF, the filter, right? We're going to have five points here and five, I'm sorry, five times and five points. But we can simplify this down if we don't feel like dealing with all of the stuff. If we move L2, L3 and the sustain level all together, it sort of fakes it into being an ADSR. So in this case, I'm gonna bring these all the way down because I want the cutoff to completely clamp down on the sound. And now time one becomes the attack and time two becomes the decay, so. We can turn the volume up a bit. Now, I don't know well, how well you guys can hear it, but I'm hearing some really good whining coming out of the low-res digital-to-analog converters, which I love that sort of gritty digital sound. 
we could add a little release to both the amplifier and the envelope. So we're getting that sort of a thing. Um, I'm actually going to move the key mode from dual into dual solo, which just means we're able to use all four partials, but now it's monophonic. Right, sounds pretty good. Not so bad, right? Am I going too fast for anybody? Do anybody have any questions so far? I'm just working on Big Grimes Moog bass sound real quick. Really, we're we're getting there very quickly. We can increase the envelope depth if we want. I like that a lot. That's ballsy. We really didn't need to mess with anything too much to change that. So now let's mute these upper two partials and go to, um, let's mess with the lower tone. So what I'm gonna do is you can see that the upper two partials are muted. So we're only dealing now with the lower tone. So we shouldn't hear too much. We're back to our kind of standards uh, square wave thing, right? So I wanna go to common select and we're gonna check out a different structure. So the structure I'm going to pick is actually structure, let's go with structure three. So what's going on with structure three is it is a PCM sample and a synthesis sample. So if I go to structure three here, and now if we go over here and we're controlling, we can hear the different samples that we could go through. Let's uh, adjust the key follow here. Go into common select and bring the partial balance just to the first one real quick. So we can hear, we've got this PCM sample, right? That's the first sample, the marimba sample that's in here, which is pretty cool. Not bad. There's a sample that I wanted to use that I think would be kind of cool, and it's called, um, where is it? I've got the list over here. Do, do, do. Like we could pick like a pick sample, for instance, if we wanted to have like a little bit of bass guitar type sound. Which sounds good, plus the bit crushing almost has like a res bass type sound to it, right? Um, let me see if I can find the log base. There's like a log base sample in here somewhere. Uh, I saw it earlier. I know it's in the video somewhere. Log base five. So this sample's pretty good too. Oh, you can hear it's too low. So we just got to bring that up an octave. Here, we'll bring it up to... We got to bring it up actually two octaves to get it to sound good. Okay, so that sounds really good. I actually want to use a combination of those. So we actually need to go back into the structure and now change it over to structure six. That's using two PCM samples. And we'll move the partial balance all the way over to the other partial. Now we can select that and we will move that over to wave 15, and we should be hearing the pick. So we've got that sort of res thing, and now just by going to the common select, we can balance between the two partials, so. So it's like this partial's got the low, like the warmth to it. This one's got kind of that gritty bite to it. So I like both of those. They sound really good together. I guess I'm at 70% to that other partial. So now we've got like a really cool attack sound that we can layer with our other sound. So I'm going to unmute the upper partials and here's everything all together now.
sounds f- fucking dark, which is great. Um, so we're moving past just Moog base into PCM sample territory here. I'm going to get a little bit of tea here. As I've been talking a lot of shit. Um, what a fucking nasty sound, though. So let's say we want a little bit more of the virtual analog. Well, we have tone balance up here. So we could go all the way to just the virtual analog sound that we made or all the way just to the PCM samples. That's already sounding monstrous as far as a baseline sound. One tip that I've picked up now that I've had a little time with the D50 is the PCM samples have a lot of attack to them because they're so short. So it's good to have them mixed a little bit quieter in the mix uh, for sure. Had to pull up an image of the PG-1000 waveforms top right. Sounds good, yes. So in the video that I did, the link's in the description, it's got everything covered. I put the pictures from the manual up so everybody can see what's going on. Over here, I've just got the cheat sheets. I've got the manual and some notes about what's going on. So one thing that the D50 does really well is actually EQ. So that's already sounding monstrous, but you know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna boost up. We're gonna add a little bit of EQ and we're gonna pick a low frequency. We're gonna go down to like 150. And I've added six decibels. And it's, it's just amazing how good this synth sounds, especially once you start adding that EQ. And then why don't we pick a frequency up top? I'm going to make it really extreme. I'll put up the 12 decibels so we can pick a frequency to sort of define that bite and attack. Wow, that's like way too much. We need to increase the frequency here. I think 2K is a good point, and I'm just going to bring that down, and we'll add some back in to make it sound right. See, it sounds like really uh, not aggressive anymore, so. It's sounding really big and thunderous and aggressive. And now we can go real quick, sort of as like a finishing touch of the sound. Let's go to the output mode, make sure it's on one. All that means is the reverb goes through both the upper and lower tones and is going through the stereo outs on the back of the synth. Uh, the output modes are something I cover in deeper detail. And we can pick a different type. In this case, I want to use like a reverse gate. So let's go try 26 is the first reverse gate, I believe. And we can just uh, blend some of that in and see how it sounds. Really cool. Let's just try uh, 27 real quick to see if that's any better. I like the 26 better. Really cool. We can bring that back a bit. It's a little extreme. But I actually kind of liked it. I mean, it was pretty cool. Yeah, really uh, very quick. And so I was talking to some people in these synthesizer groups on Facebook about this, and they were saying... You know, they're having trouble learning the D50 because the PG-1000 doesn't lend itself actually, an LA synthesis in general, doesn't lend itself to reverse engineering well. So if you pull up a patch, it can be very hard to know what's going on because there's hundreds of parameters in here. However, making patches, you can get there very quickly. So let's go ahead and write this patch. So we're going to go just a patch edit name. And uh, what's a good name for this one, guys? We'll call this uh, we'll call this one Big Grime for the hell of it, because that's a cool name. So I'm going to just type that in here. Uh, and it takes a little bit. Uh, one thing I don't love about hardware sense is typing in 
the uh here we go big and one two three four and grime there we are uh we'll call it base too fuck it because we've got the room for it so sorry i know this is not engaging content but it's just part of working with vintage synths and then we are almost done boom so i can hit right and hit enter and we are good to go so we have written that patch there so if i go to another patch uh this is the other baseline sound or we could go to the big grime bass here really cool uh sound to it and so that's the first of a few sounds that we can do i'm going to try to do as many sounds as possible again um if you guys can shout out some i'm going to do strings next because synth punk uh shouted out strings so that's the next one we're going to do but by all means please uh shout some stuff out uh it's helpful Let's go ahead and do some strings. So, so I want to do something very similar to what we did last time, which is to have the synth be comprised of a two PCM samples and then two virtual analog synthesis things going on. So going into upper and lower select here, I'm actually going to select on the upper uh tone here i'm going to select structure one that's your virtual analog right on the lower tone i'm going to select structure six because that's the pcm samples and you'll notice you can't hear anything i need to go to key mode on the d50 and move it over to dual mode and now you should be able to hear well if i was doing everything right you'd be able to hear that lower thing but for some reason we are not hearing that yet we'll get there we'll figure it out not a big deal. <laughs> so back to structure number one real quick. Um, we're going to go and set the partial balance to 50-50. 50-50. Right. And let's go set the waveform. I'm sorry. Let's uh, move it. We have to select the upper partials here. Open the cutoff and change the waveform to sawtooth. We'll do the same thing. We're going to just detune one of them a bit. Oh, we can't hear that because the partial balance is off. We need to make sure. Huh, that's interesting. Why am I... Uh... That one's tune is off too, interestingly. I just want that to be normal. We're in dual mode. This is up. Level is up. Let me see. The partial mutes are all off. Let's mute just these guys so we can hear just partial two. All right. There we go. Key follow. I think it just didn't register the level jump. So we'll just the fine tune a bit. And then unmute partial one. I'm sorry. Uh, yeah, that partial. So by adding that detune in, we need that on this synth because the tuning is so ridiculously tight. And um, we can actually bring the level down a bit. How about a pulsating patch that has LFOs affecting both layer volumes and panning? All right, so panning, I, I believe, is not something that can be done with the D50, which is super heartbreaking because it does have those stereo outs. So the synthesizer is essentially still... Um, uh, you know, sending a mono signal to the chorus and the reverb, which are stereo. So it's still sort of similar. You can tell that it's like kind of based off of Jupiter 8 in some sense. Um, if you want to do panning stuff, the SQ80 is very similar to the D50, but allows you to pan different uh, oscillators, which is pretty crazy. So this is sort of a basis of a string sound. But what I want to do is add some pulse width modulation. 
So we need to go to PWM LFO select and select LFO one, right? And adjust the pulse width depth. 50% is pretty good. And you'll notice nothing's really happening. And that's because we need to go to the common select. The LFOs are common to the tone and change the rate. And now we'll be able to hear the PWM. Sounds really good. I'm gonna bring the depth down just a bit. So we're getting already like a really thick tone, but obviously that's not everything you need for a string sound. We need to get some filter going and we need something to happen with the amplifier. So to the, for this, why don't we start with the amplifier? We're just gonna add some T1, which is the attack to the sound. In this case, I just want to take off the very beginning of the sound. I'm not trying to murder the sound. I just want a little bit off the front end. So it's not so harsh. And of course, we need release. Already, we're starting to get a very cool sound. And it's got that D50 character. Um, Let's go ahead and go back. Sorry if I was sitting in the way of the uh, PG-1000. Let's bring the cutoff down. And this is a good, a good point to point out, too. The cutoff frequency, uh, a lot of parameters in the PG-1000 don't update immediately. So you can't do real-time cutoff sweeps. Let me show you real quick. See, nothing happened. I have to re-trigger the notes. So we'll start with a warm tone. And then we will add some envelope depth and envelope velocity to actually shape the sound with the filter. And so we needed to add some attack. And release. I want a, a nice slow evolving. not that slow it could be a little finicky this sometimes you go from too fast to too slow really quickly a little faster 75 maybe somewhere in there and i'm gonna bring the uh level two three and four all to the about 50 percent and that's just a way to fake an ADSR. How's everything looking and sounding, guys? I know I keep standing in the way of the uh, light here, so I'll try to keep not doing that as much. Uh, I'm going to add after range all the way. That way we can control the filter with aftertouch. So here's how this sounds. Right. Sounds pretty good. And so we're kind of in the neighborhood. Let's add some resonance. Resonance on the D50 sounds pretty good, actually. Yeah, so that's not a terrible uh, sounding thing. Why don't we go into comment select for the patch. We'll set it to one. And then let's pick another reverb type. In this case, I want to use chapel because strings sound good in a chapel. So let's see how this sounds uh, about 50% reverb type four, which is the chapel and see how we what kind of neighborhood we're in. Wow, that is ringy. So one thing I found th through listening to the D50 is the reverbs are shockingly poor, which gets past you because the patches sound so good. Like Adrian Scott and Eric Persing knew how to use the effects in very effective ways. And... 
If, let's just listen to just the reverb and you can hear how metallic and ringy it is. Not always uh, so wonderful. So what I'm going to do is go to large hall, which is patch three, I think. Or reverb bounce, leave that there. Patch three. Let's try that one out real quick and see if we like it better. Yeah, not great. Not for this type of sound. So what we're going to use instead is some cross delay. So cross delay 23 is one of my favorites. And the delay is going to give us that sense of space without there being that metallic sound. There's certain reverbs that sound good, certain ones that are a little bit rough. And I was shocked that like the hall and stuff like that are not super wonderful. So we've got a little bit more space. We could try uh, cross delay 24 as well. really good we could turn it down a bit though yeah a little lfo delay would you like the, the the lfo to go to the filter or the pitch my friend why don't we go pitch first i think so what we're going to do is go to for waveform pitch we'll go to lfo mode uh, positive here, which is a little counterintuitive, uh, but it's a thing to know about how the synth works. Then we're going to go to, let me see here, um, the pitch, what is this, LFO, let's go ahead and go to the pitch mod LFO, depth. <laughs> little vibrato on the sound now. Sounding really warm and magical. What we could also do is do some amplitude modulation. So if I go back to the partial parameters and I go to LFO select and we go to LFO number two, we can then use this LFO for Amplitude modulation, or tremolo, as it's often called. Did I actually add some depth to it? Let's go 100% so you guys can really hear what's going on here. So that's obviously pretty intense, but we could dial that back. Uh, so that's the LFO depth all the way off. And then what our friend Dubstation was saying was we could then also delay it. So what happens here is it introduces a delay between when the notes start starts and when the LFO starts working. So. hear that the LFO takes some time before it starts automating the pitch, or I'm sorry, the uh, volume. Yeah. LFO speed to aftertouch. I'm not aware that that's possible, unfortunately. Um, so there's a few things that I found that didn't seem possible. For one thing, you can't do much with the LFO with the PCM samples, which is heartbreaking. I love modulating LFO rate with aftertouch. And unfortunately, we can't do that. The aftertouch just modifies uh, things like how much is there, uh, which is a little bit of a shame because I love the sound of a moving rate when it, with an LFO. I don't love LFOs in, to a certain extent because they, they are so static, right? The, the delay helps with that. All right, so 
so far, we've just been dealing with the upper two partials. Why don't we mute these guys and move over to the lower partials, which we should have on structure six and partial balance 50-50, right? And then we can check out these uh, different sounds that we have here. Make sure the level's all the way up and pick a sound. And I'm not hearing any. What am I doing wrong? Oh, wait, we need to have these listenable. There we go, it's working. Set the key follow to one one. With that delay, it's got uh, big Donkey Kong Country vibes, right? David Wise. We just happen to land on a uh, sort of horn type sound, but what we want are some string sounds. So what we're first going to do is go find a string attack sound, which are, uh, live around 44 or so. Pretty, pretty not useful sound for what we're doing here. In here, they had so little sample memory to play with. couple of choices here. Forty six seems like the best bet here. Pretty, pretty rough. <laughs> so what we're going to have to do almost inevitably is use a very small amount of that. I'm going to mute that first partial and select only the second one. And now we're going to pick a looped uh, sound that we can use to be the basis of this PCM part here. And we've got these spectral waves to play with. They're very loud. Which give the synth its sort of famous sound. So what I'm going to do is try to kind of mimic the sound of the other patch. By just bringing down these points and kind of creating an, an attack decay sound. We need to break that up a bit, um, but we'll go back to uh, comment select and adjust the partial balance. Unmute the lowest partial here. I know I'm going quick, guys. Oh, you can hear these aren't in key with each other, so that's going to be a problem. So let's make sure the uh, tuning is correct on both of these. And I think we're going to have to tune the spectral wave because it's a little off. There we go. A is the right. So now we're entering the area which makes the D50 so special. We're getting these like really beautiful ethereal. Again, are we are we really doing strings? Maybe not, but it'll be a cool st synth strings patch, right? Really cool. So, anyways, we need to break this up with some chorus. So I'm gonna go to common select and pick a uh, chorus one or two, and we just address the rate and depth here and the balance here.
So now we've sort of loosened it up a bit. Uh, we could try a different chorus if we wanted. Right. And we can adjust the partial balance even further. We need very little of that attack. For this sound. Now we can unmute the upper partials finally. Is everybody doing a good job of following me so far? And you can hear that that's very loud. And so what we need to do is adjust the tone balance here. So we've got patch which is in red, the tone balance, and we'll go all the way to the virtual analog. So that's a better balance point. But we need to just increase the attack on the spectral wave further. One thing I'm noticing is it seems like there's an octave divide between the virtual analog and the spectral stuff. So we can do that real quick just by going over to the upper two virtual analog stuff and just bringing them up an octave here real quick. See what they're like even an octave up from there. See if that's better. Wow. Yeah. So now we're basically there. Uh, we could add some chorus to just the upper part too. So we could pick the same chorus and kind of around the same settings, you know, and just see how that changes things. Yeah. So, you know, it's just... Yeah, really, uh, pretty much there as far as I'm concerned. Uh, as far as I'm concerned, we could increase the reverb balance a bit if we want, just to make it a little bit more spacey. that actually I want to actually bring a little bit more of that spectral stuff in because it's really interesting uh, so yeah really really cool um, hey thanks for subscribing Evan and cultured slob so cool you're doing this it was almost over my d50 uh, but here you come along. Well, welcome to the stream, my friend. We'll be checking this out a lot. Uh, full tutorial on this, links in the description, but we're gonna be doing uh, basically sound requests, whatever types of sounds you wanna hear. So go ahead and shout them out. I'd love to get it. Um, Dubstation Zero, my, my friend has uh, requested a pulsating patch as Alpha is affecting both layers, volume and panning. We can do a pulsating patch. OB6 can't do that. Yes, there's a lot of things that this synth can do that the OB6 can't and vice versa. No notch filtering on this synth, but there is on the JD800 for what it's worth or the boutique JD08. Really just cinematic and cyberpunk and you know everything you could write or like. So <laughs> let's uh, write the patch and we're going to uh, call it uh, synthpunk strings uh where's the h there we go p always takes a bit
and we're going to go to strings. Where's the R? And we're almost there, guys. Bear with me. Thank you, thank you, thank you. There we go. And now our boy, Synthpunk, is immortalized in the thing. Right and enter, and we have this sound. Really cool uh, that we've done that. Love you, synth punk. Really cool sound. That to me sort of is like the ex you know the the best use of the D fifty is that combination of PCM plus virtual analog and just a really just massive massive sound. <laughs> Really, really cool. Um, let's see here. Almost Boards of Canada territory. How about some Pizza Go Go on PCP? All right. Well, we can see what we could do about that. Um, we'll move on to a brand new patch. Same thing. First thing I'm going to do is move it over into dual mode. That's just by hitting key mode and then increment, and it's flashing dual. Over here, common select. We're going to go in this case to structure six for. Both the upper and lower tone, the partial bounds 50. And then the level all the way up to, no, 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 no. Oh, then we go over here and the level all the way up. Adjust the key follow. Here we go. Right. Um. Now let's go and pick a Pizza Go Go sound for all of them. One of the ways I like to work with the D50 and the PG-1000, by the way, is to actually start with all the partials together. So you're basically just like making one uh, layer of the D50 and applying it to all four of the layers and then adjusting the layers as you go. Um, so we can change things as we go, but for now, let's just go ahead and find that Pizza Go Go, which I think is, let's see where it's at. I know it's here somewhere. Do, do, do. I think it's around the, do, 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 47? 47, something like that. Yeah, so, you know, you can do the, um, what is it? Uh, sort of sound, right? <laughs> or I guess it's probably up here, right? Right. So we've got that. Uh, not super inspiring yet, but we'll get there. Um, so the first thing we could do is change the output mode. Uh, I'm sorry, we have to go up to common select. That's the biggest thing about the PG-1000 and editing the D50. By the way, this all works with the synthesizer uh, software too, Roland Cloud, VST, whatever. It has the PG-1000 built in, so it's exactly the same. Um, but you do a lot of like jumping back and forth between is that a common parameter or a partial parameter? It's just a thing you sort of get used to, but you can see I still make errors. Um, yeah, we just got to add some, some uh, fairy dust on it. So we're going to go and pick a reverb type. In this case... I do want a cross delay, so we could try like 13 and see where we're at here. So 13's a cross and then 23 is another cross. We'll see how we, which one we prefer. Yeah, so that's kind of good. All right, so right now we're just hearing um, partials 
one, two, three, and four are all doing the same thing, which is that pizza go go sound. Um, but what we could do is is we could start fucking it up a bit. Um, one thing that we could do is go uh, and use the chase mode so chase is this crazy feature that i think i've only seen on the d50 i don't even know if it's in the jd800 and it's essentially a way that you can like i'm familiar with the phrase chase from lighting where for instance the lights in this room are doing a chase where you can see that the lights turn off in sequence so that's sort of what chase does with the synthesizer actually and so we'll go to chase mode and we'll go to upper, lower, upper. And we're not really gonna hear a lot until we adjust the chase level in time, but uh, for this, I'm gonna turn the reverb balance all the way off so we can hear where, what we're doing here. So if I press a note, we should hear something? What am I doing wrong here? Upper, lower, upper. Make sure I have everything unmuted. Yeah, I should have everything unmuted. Let's see if we can hear the upper tone. Let's see if we can hear the lower tone. Okay, what am I, oh, I know, stupid me. You have to press the chase button on the actual synthesizer here. Just gotta be on and red. I don't know if you guys can see that. Uh, that was what I was doing wrong. And now we should be able to set this. <laughs> this sort of thing where it's automatically sequence sequencing out so i'm adjusting the chase time so we can get these like little repeats um and then we can change the chase level to adjust how many repeats we get so Right, so I could bring the chase level down a bit so we just get kind of a few. Right, which is right now, it sounds, you, it sounds like nothing's happening, right? Other than we're getting four repeats. But that's because the upper and lower tones are the same pitch. But what we could do is while we're here, we could upper key shift the uppers so that we're hearing this. <laughs> and now we're getting a fifth note difference. And I'm going to increase the chase level because I want to get a lot of repeats. And this is how you could get these like kind of crazy. A little too much there. So this is a feature that did not make it onto a lot of synthesizers in the future. For some reason, this one's just too weird and doesn't make enough sense. Now, if we add that delay back in, this is why I picked this delay. Why don't we turn the uh, chase mode down up, or uh, I like the chase mode, but let's turn it down a bit. Uh, pretty much getting crazy. Right, we could add some chorus to that real quick if we wanted to and just bring in some of that. Make it a little wider. Yeah, we're getting really, uh, we're getting out there. Really. One thing that's uh, a shame about the D50 as compared to the JD800 is we can't filter that. So there's not actually as much that we can do with the tone in terms of uh, what could be done. So uh, in terms of what you can do with the PCM samples. We can change the 
uh, key shifting here too to go all the way up to an octave if we wanted. Depending on what you want, um, it's probably more musically useful. Yeah, sounds really good. Um, so we'll go ahead and write this one. I don't, really don't think we need to add anything to that. Um, Billy, welcome to the stream. Yes, it is trippy. So let's go ahead and patch edit name here. And we will call this one cultured slob. Call this one culture. Where's that T? Cultured, we're almost there. Whoopsie daisy, let's go back. Missed the E. Cultured. Um, we'll call it Cultured Go-Go. And then a quick way to just have the patch edit, get rid of everything is move the joystick to the left, press right, joystick to left, right. Just do this little thing. I missed, I missed one. There we go. And then so we've got Cultured Go-Go and our boy Cultured Slob is uh, immortalized in the patch here. So I'm gonna hit enter and we've got this really cool sound. Really, really useful. Um, Let's see. <laughs> PC P a go go Lamau. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's actually a better. Really cool. Uh, pretty in incredible what can be done there. Uh, so, what's the next one? What do you guys want to hear next? I'm going to take this opportunity to drink a little bit more tea and play maybe a couple more patches that I've made um, while you guys shout out what you'd like to hear. Uh, so, let's go back to. Our first things here, the opening patch is the last patch I made in the video. It's using the wave sequencing-esque features of the D50 to, as well as ring modulation and aftertouch pitch bend to create the sort of pretty hate machine type sound. Which is pretty neat. What else do we have? Uh, some other ones that I haven't shown you guys yet. Here's another sort of string pad using pulse width modulation on the sawtooth. Also using a sawtooth LFO on the filter, which is cool. Here's a piano sound I created for the song that's in the intro and outro of this video. Really gorgeous. Sort of like hyper 80s dream piano. things that's so crazy about the d50 is that when you're hearing the individual parts the partials the samples sound so low res and gritty and terrible but by the time you get to you know the final sound it's just like something always comes together right at the end and it just glues it together and I've really got that i'm going to uh sell these patches at some point and by sell i mean they're going to be free for everybody who's a member of this channel. So if you haven't yet, join the channel. That's a really cool thing you could do. Um, let's see. It's almost an organ, kind of an oriental piano. Yes. Uh, what else do I have here? Oh, here's another cool one. Uh, so the Poly 6, which is right up here, has a really cool thing where you can start with a sawtooth, but then key track the filter and basically get a sine wave. And I wanted to know if the D50 could do the same thing. So what you're listening to right here is 
a sawtooth wave, but because the filter is perfectly key tracking and has a lot of resonance and a little bit of amplitude modulation, you get this beautiful sort of almost Rhodes type sound. So very cool, some of the things. Here's a more typical D50-esque type sound, which is using the PCM samples as well as some virtual analog. Yeah, it does have kind of that Iceman sound, doesn't it? I didn't really think about that. Um, yeah, and I think that's covered like everything we've covered so far. So we're on to another one. Let's see, do you guys have any more suggestions, types of sounds you would like me to do? Any sort of uh, cool things or features you'd like for me to go through with the synthesizer? I'd love to, uh, you know. Any request, any type of sound you would like to hear that the synth can do, I would be uh, happy to oblige if it's at all possible. Ah, oh, love a good tea. When we go in here and uh, just let this. All right, so I would say push the lo-fi boards of Canada thing. Um, and Vulture Mom would like to hear some brass and trombones. Okay, so Aquatic, forgive me. I am not super up on boards of Canada. What is that? Is this sort of like the sort of dreamy lo-fi warbly type pad sound? I'm not sure, actually. Um... So let me know, and then we can do some brass and trombone sounds, too. I do have a, um, from the video, I have a brass sound that I actually based off the K3 behind me. Let's go up here. It sounds better in this range. Yeah, so that's kind of that um, Kawhi K3 type thing. Yeah, have to run and get help Z finish his homework and then get to sleep. Autumn, I love you so much. Thank you for always hanging out. Say hi to Xander for me. And have a wonderful night. Uh, spot a tea, spot a tea sauce, spot a tea. Machine Storm, welcome to the stream. How's it going? Hey, what's up? Pinto is my boy Pinto. Okay, so if I'm understanding you correctly, we're going to do some sort of warm stuff. So let's go over here and So what we're going to do is go to common select here and we're going to set the upper tone to be a virtual uh, we'll set the upper tone to be PCM samples. We're going to start there, okay? So what we should be hearing, I'm going to leave the partial balance all the way down. We should hear and then we should be able to just go in here and pull up a different sample. Glad to hear you're doing well, my friend. A little bit of slap bass stuff. But what I'm going to go for is one of the first four samples, which are a marimba. A, what do we have here? We've got a vibraphone. Sounds pretty good. And then we got a couple of xylophones. Funny sound. I think I like the vibraphone the best. Yeah. Almost sounds like a, a um, like a toy that you might have from the eighties, you know? So, we're going to just stay with that, and we're going to apply um, some chorus and reverb to that. So we're going to just pick a chorus. I'm going to go for chorus 8, which is actually based off the dimension D. Which 
It's a very transparent chorus type sound, just to give it some stereo width. And then this sound for this part is going to be based off of what's going on with the upper tones uh, or reverb of the upper tone. So let's pick another. We had try a reverb, but I have a feeling it's not going to work. Um, but here's a couple of weird ones. Like, so if I go to uh, Twisted Space, you'll hear how weird this sounds. Just like keeps going. It's like one of those like freeze infinite reverbs, which can be cool. I don't know if it's Boards of Canada cool. Just really keeps going. Which can be troublesome if you are bad at playing, because if you play one wrong note, it's like not going away. Uh, so that is a cool one, though. Why don't we go to uh, Twisted Space? So that's one down. Kind of could be a lo-fi sound. Very weird sort of reverb sound. Let's go back to my favorite uh, cross delays. Twenty four sounds good. We can even use the reverb sort of, I'm sorry, the chorus in a way is a bit of an EQ. So we're starting to get a little bit of that like lo-fi vintage thing. But we don't have any sustain. We've just got that really cool uh, sound. So right now I've got the reverb balance at about 65%. I'm going to turn it all the way off. And we're going to forget about the upper tones for a bit and just worry about the lower ones. So we're going to set the structure for the lower tone to one virtual analog. And the level all the way up. Level all the way up. And the, oh, right, we gotta go to key mode, dual. Sorry, there we go, we should be hearing it now. That's there. We gotta do, um, adjust the partial balance to 50-50. And then go to the lower tones, turn up the cutoff frequency. You'll notice whatever notes I'm playing, it's not following, so we need to adjust the key follow here. And turn the volume down a bit. Right. Let's go ahead and we'll leave it on the square wave, but we're going to create some pulse width modulation to give it some life. Uh, so first thing we're going to do is PWM LFO select to LFO one and PWM depth to about 50%. Go to the common LFO. So we have to go to common select to affect the LFO parameters. Adjust the rate. Sounds good. I want to adjust the key shift of this patch. So the lower tone key shift, we're going to move it up an octave. Ah, come on. Sounds good, but the partials are too close in tune. So we just need to adjust that. So with plus 30, it's really thick. Probably a little too much because we're going to apply some modulation with the LFO. Yeah, so around 15 sounds a little bit better. We're going to make the LFO mode positive on both of them. And then increase the LFO depth here. You can hear that's like really warbly.
increase the amount, bring the amount rate, but the amount down. <laughs> You can add a little bit more warble in. But we have a problem, which is the LFO one is now controlling both the pitch and the PWM. That's easy to fix. We'll just go to the partial selects and select a different LFO. So we'll go to LFO two, back to the common LFO and just adjust the rate and now. And the reason I'm adjusting the pitch is it's giving it the sound of like an old vinyl record. So when the record would go around, sometimes it would sort of bend in pitch as it was going. So we're getting a little of that seasick warbliness. And now we just need to add some filter. Oh, whoopsie daisy. I need to be selecting this. Envelope depth after range. Adjust all of these. So we're getting like a little bit of a pluck. So it's starting to sound almost like that old vinyl record type thing now that we have a little filter shape going on. Let's just add a little bit of release. It's definitely warbly. One thing we can do that's like a really cool feature of the D50 that I haven't mentioned yet in this stream is adjust the filter by time, time key follow. So what that does is it adjusts the rate of the filter's envelope by key tracking. And so if I adjust this and add it to say, here's it just off, you know, it's going to do the same thing every time but if I turn all the way up you'll hear that higher notes are faster and then lower ones are more open it's really short I'm going to make it a little less extreme I actually liked it kind of halfway so instead of all the way which is value four uh, we'll leave it at value three. And you'll notice why that's kind of cool is because the sample is getting shorter as we go up an octave. So let's hear all of that together and see what we've got. Still sounding a little unnatural because we need to bring the reverb, or uh, really it's delay back in to about 65, I think is where we had it at. Ooh, we're getting lush up in this motherfucker. I'm gonna go ahead and adjust the lower key shift all the way up to two octaves. So it matches the um, sample better. We can just adjust the tone balance a bit. It's good to... Let's go back in here and make sure we've got the after range all the way up so you can 
add some filter sweep with the aftertouch. Yeah, really, uh, really cool. Let's see. I think that's pretty much good to go. Let's see here. I think that's, uh, I'm pretty happy with that one. Let's go ahead and write this one into memory. I wonder if Aquatic Borealis will fit its way in there. So we'll go to patch edit, name, and then we'll try to see if we can fit your whole name in there, Aquatic. Uh, boo, boo, boo. Do, 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 do. Thank you, Cultured Slob. I uh, definitely spent a lot of time with the manual trying to memorize everything and also be able to present it in a video uh, that would be useful to the modern user. You know, when they wrote the manual, they weren't really sure, you know, what, who was going to be reading it and, and so on and so forth. So, you know, they might have thought that things like, uh, like bias and chase would make its way all the way into modern synthesizers, but uh, make sure I'm spelling that right. Oh, fuck that up. E L. List. There we go. What a great name, anyways. Yeah, wow, just incredible. So let's go ahead and write that and enter. I would love to check them out sometime, for sure. Yeah, it does have that, like, old-timey piano type thing, and that's usually when it comes to, like, lo-fi, that's what you need to have to get, get sell that convincing sound is there needs to be some sort of pitch modulation, kind of like a warbling in and out, because otherwise it's just not going to have that right sound. It's going to be... It's really beautiful, guys. That's really cool sound. So, what's the next sound? What do you guys want to hear? I can show you guys uh, something else. Oh, uh, Vulture Mom said brass and trombones. Yeah, I'm sorry. I hope the uh, PG-1000s don't go up too much. Detronics, a Dutch company, actually makes a replacement PG-1000. It's a little smaller. Um but I think they're closer to $300, whereas usually PG-1000s go for about $700 at the time of this video would be about what I bet you could buy one for. Um, so yeah, we'll do some trombones. And I think we even have some loops in there. Uh, that we could use. So we'll just go to upper and lower select and we'll set it to structure six. And we will adjust the partial balance. Then select everybody and adjust the key tracking. Just the mode on the keyboard and adjust the level so we're going to start with wave 62 I think let's see so these are um, these are PCM short samples that are looped This is sort of like a um, saxophony type sound. You can try a couple of others in the neighborhood. Ooh, actually, this one sounded kind of horn like, didn't it? I'm going to go 
back into key mode and just put it into whole mode. We'll just use the upper tone for this one. We don't have to worry about the lower one. Let's go ahead and change the attack. So what we need now is an attack sample to sort of sell the realism of the sound. And we're going to go down to uh, clarinet is 31. And we'll check out some of the ones in this neighborhood real quick. Let's go ahead and mute this. Clarinetti. Ooh, that could be cool with that, because it's kind of, kind of like a breathy type thing. Maybe not. It sounded like a cool idea in my head. Still, that's like for more of a woodwind type thing. We need to go to lips one and lips two. The, uh, what is that? Lips one is 39. The very rude sounding. <laughs> Those, but it's really like trying to catch the essence of the beginning of a brass instrument. Let's see. Uh, trombones is 42. So that was the request, right? So. Yeah, this will work. You know, if. <laughs> And again, this is a good example of how gritty and bad the samples kind of can sound on their own. Let's go ahead and unmute uh, the second partial here. You can hear that we've got a problem. They're not uh, gelling in terms of octave. So we need to bring the octave of this up. Now, so two octaves up and they're gelling better. So now we have a very rough, <laughs> emphasis on rough, uh, sort of 8-bit uh, trombone sound. Like if you were listening to a video game, right? <laughs> it's kind of crazy how bad it is. Um, yes, it is sexier than Jennifer Aniston in the 90s, for sure. Um, let's see. Hey, Rockman Music, welcome to the stream. I appreciate you. So we've got a pretty rough sound, and one problem is, one problem is we actually can't filter anything. So we've got to do everything just by volume. Uh, we can't filter anything. We can't even do amplitude modulation. We can't even do a whole lot except for pitch modulation. I believe we can do. Um, which is which is frustrating for sure. Um, anywhere you see a little line here on the PCM one thousand or the PG one thousand, you can see what can be controlled and what can't. So in this case, why don't we add a little bit of uh, vibrato to the to the patch by adding a little bit of LFO depth and adjusting the rate. Now that's very extreme, but we're going to add some delay in. And then just bring the LFO depth way down. We need to set sync to key. And so there's a few different sync modes. And by the way, it's the only thing that I've noticed I've gotten uh, wrong or I didn't mention in the three hour complete tutorial is that um, only LFO one can do key sync mode, which means every time you hit a note, the LFO re-triggers. LFOs two and three can't do that. They can still sync, but it's only when you've released every note and then start again that it will re-trigger. Just a little thing. So 
So we've added a little bit of amplitude modulation. help keep it from getting too terrible it is a pretty uh, aggressively terrible sound so we need to m mellow that out with a shitload of chorus so we'll go back to selection dimension d and add some so here's without here's with here's with a lot i actually want to use something more extreme than that i think Chorus 2 is very, uh, very powerful. You can hear up here, it's getting really shrill. Oh, terrible, terrible, terrible sound. So one thing we can do is... Just the gain of the low frequency, it's a shelf. And so as you boost, you will lose some high end. So just by adding a lot of low end, we can start to warm the sound up and cut some of the frequencies above 500 Hertz. Oh, that's the uh, wrong thing. Let's go over here and add some release. And I still am really getting this like horrible frequency r ripping my eardrum out. So I'm gonna try to find that. Um, I'm really fucking this up. Going back to common select to adjust the EQ. We're gonna pull out everything and we're gonna pick a frequency probably around 2K or higher. So we've pulled out 12 decibels here. So this is without. And then pulling out that, we've really smoothed out that top end, right? I don't think we need as much of a boost to the low end, actually. So I'll bring that down to six. And by picking a frequency around 2K, we're still getting that like super high end, like closer to 10K. So we actually have kind of a beautiful sound that doesn't sound so bad. And if you hold a note or chord, you know, you get. So we've got a certain kind of sound, which is actually super neat. Actually sounds not so terrible. And um, did we, we have some reverb on this already? I can't remember. Let's see. Wow. Reverb actually sounds pretty good with this patch. Wonder what reverb that is. These are different halls. Uh, we could go try Bright Hall, which is 17. don't like that let's try cave let's try that i don't need it to be bright i think the original uh ones were good let's try medium hall it's warmer you don't get as much of that terrible ringing We just could dial that back a little bit. I want to get a little 
little bit lower. So I'm going to go back up to the partial selects. Remember which one I'm listening to. I'm going to bring that down an octave. And I'll bring the other one down an octave to C2 here. Wait, I need to bring that down further, right? Yeah. Very mysteriously, that horrible trombone sound has been <laughs> changed into this really beautiful, ethereal, almost vocal-like quality pad. Which is super, super cool. Rockman says, I am having a studio re-racking gear and re-cabling night. This live stream is a perfect soundtrack for it. Infotainment. Hope everything is nice over in Florida. Yes, I am in Florida, and uh, things are wonderful here. Love the state. It is a cool 70 degrees out. <laughs> While the rest of the world's probably pretty cool, cold. Actually quite surprising. reminding me a bit of the um, Proteus, which I love so much. So anyways, let's go ahead and uh, patch edit name, and we'll call this one um, we'll call it uh, Bones for Mom. All right, so guys, this would be a great time if anybody has some more patch requests. Um, go ahead and shout them out in the chat, and I'd be happy to try to make a sound that fulfills the criterion. If there's a type of sound you'd like to see if the D50 could make, or what have you, um, that would be a cool thing to do. So go ahead and do that, if you don't mind. And then, here we go. Bones for Mom. Let's go ahead and write that one in. Yeah, really, really cool. Um, Feels like 33 out now, and I live in a van. Jesus. That's intense, Spaceman. I love how you can hear how the sound starts off, and it like kind of has that boring sound, but the vibrato is very major in making this beautiful. Sounds great to me. Sadly, cannot use any of my hardware. That is very terrible. Corvy Day, welcome to the stream. A detuned Gary Newman lead. Hell yeah. Now, Mersbo, I don't know what that is. Machine Storm. So you were technically there first. If you could explain to me what that is, I will do my best to do that. Let's move along. Back to the start. Common, uh, first thing we'll do is we'll move the key mode over to dual. Then common select up here, we'll set the structure to one because we're going to use virtual analog for this. Partial balance to 50. Then we'll select all of the partials. Key follow to one. Otherwise, everything is going to be all fucked up. Level 
to 85-ish. Cut off all the way up. In here, everything's a little interesting right now. To make sure we're hearing everything, I'll just mute these guys. Yeah, so we're hearing just the lower ones. Okay, good. So I will unmute these. And the first thing we'll do is in common select, we will key shift the upper tone by an octave. That's just so we can cheat uh, some sound into it. Help us get more of a lead type sound. We're already getting closer. What we can do is detune partials two and four up a bit by, let's say, 15. Yeah, something like that. It's a crunchy kind of bones thing with static and brooding, like Oxt, Sonar, Zilliscope. I'm not familiar with any of those artists, unfortunately, but it sounds like very intense. So we can try for something like that. We're already <laughs> not that far off from a pretty decent lead sound. Just dialing back the level a bit. Let's go ahead and add some PWM. And we could do that by adding the PWM depth and just selecting LFO1, common select and adjusting the rate. We're sort of getting there. We could now introduce the filter, right? Of course. Let's go ahead and do that. Envelope depth, velocity, and aftertouch. Adjust the levels here. So we're going to bring these all the way down and level one all the way up. Adjust the envelope depth a little bit more so we get more of a pluck. basically getting a really good uh, four oscillator virtual analog patch going here with PWM. <laughs> Sounding pretty decent. Um, we could, what else could we do that would be fun to sort of make this one interesting? Well, I mean, really don't need to complicate a good thing. Let's go and adjust some of these parameters. Let's add some reverb. Let's pick uh, my good friend, the cross delay. Let's go ahead and move the key mode into dual solo. We can, of course, add some uh, chorus. Maybe dial it back a bit for this. And then let's just boost a high frequency here. You can see that whatever frequency we're on is kind of low. The 
glitchy when you move a slider. Somewhere around 6.7 kilohertz. Wow, that's big. Really helping it just cut through. We can go back and just turn it down a little bit. All right, Corvide, what do you think about that? Have I successfully accomplished the sound? Evan, I have not checked out Lego Velt's patches, and I should because he's incredible. God, that is tough. I mean, I'm happy with that one, Corvy Day. Lower notes, yes, nice. So, if we're happy with that, I'm going to just go ahead and go to patch edit name and write Corvide lead. Go ahead and, whoop, whoopsie daisy. And write that one to 32. Really kind of awesome. Really impressed by that. All right. So Machine Storm, if you can help me out with... Uh, just what you would like, kind of bones type thing. When we're talking about bones, do we mean trombones or do you mean like bone bones? <laughs> we could use the ring modulator with some of the loops just to see what's possible to create some real uh, harshness. God, that feels good. All right, moving on. Just going to move over into dual mode and then kind of the same thing we've been doing i'm gonna go to what structure do i want to do i want to do two pcm samples with ring modulation that's gonna be structure seven for both of these guys and then we're gonna do partial balance 50 percent select everybody make sure the key following is at one select different pcm samples Right? And the level's all the way up. Creepy kind of sound. Um, but what we're going to do is, uh, let's start with just, i mute the lower partial. So we're just hearing the upper two. And what I want to do is pick a loop sound uh so 77 and up are these loops okay so that's a cool one uh to use to control that ring modulation Right, so ring mod is when you combine two samples and you get these like weird metallic sounds. So what I'm gonna do is take that first partial, we'll mute the second one for now. And let's turn the tuning really low. I like around there, that's D sharp two. 
partial two. Let's mute that and select partial two. And this is, you can hear, this is the ring mod. Oh, and, and so by selecting different waves here, this actually sounds really cool. Oh wait, no it doesn't. There we go, 75 is where it's at. So what I need to do is boost the level of this. And the tone balance needs to go all the way. And partial balance. I'm actually going to turn key following off for these guys. I'm going to move this back into uh, hole. And then let's turn key following off. So whatever note I hit. And then we'll add some chorus. And we need to boost the high end. And then the real trick with this is going to be reverb, right? So we could even put it on that twisted space. Or... We actually could use whole solo. Don't love that one. Yeah, too much. Let's go find just, let's go back to maybe Bright Hall. Try that one real quick. And then we could go into the pitch here. like different ring mod type sounds by adjusting the pitch of the two partials. around there we're getting that kind of vocal quality to it and yes machine storm uh this through a lot of distortion pedals would be really cool unfortunately the d50 has no native distortion so you'd have to run it through some pedals to get that sound Yes, Dub, uh, that would be my impression of that one, too. I thought it was going to be garbage, and then it finished so cool. And that's really the thing about this synth that is so incredible, is that, you know, a lot of it doesn't sound good when you listen to just, like, an individual part. Virtual analog sounds better than you would think. 
considering the JP8000 came out 10 years after this, and to me, doesn't sound anywhere near as good in terms of virtual analog software. But there's something about, like, you hear the sounds, and that's ah, okay, but by the time you run through the EQ and the chorus and the reverb, all of a sudden, it's really good. All right, I need a little bit of low end to make this. And then I want like a really high frequency and we'll boost up high. Where we were 6.7 before, that sounded really good. Maybe a more lower. By using that like uh, one kilohertz is sort of that, like industrial. Yeah. <laughs> the D50 has distortion. They call them digital analog converters. Yeah, well, it definitely does. I mean, you can hear, if you're listening closely, all that digital whine. Yeah, so it's something about how when you play with the EQ, it's weird, like, the EQ is not standard EQ. The way it responds to things is it responds in a really intelligent musical way, and the sounds almost always benefit from it. Whereas, like, if you were just using an EQ plugin and was doing 12 decibel boosts on things, it would sound really terrible. Anyways, that's actually um, not a bad place to call it for the night, but let's go ahead and write the name in here. So that's machine. Storm. Machine Storm, I don't know how to describe this patch. Machine Storm Robots? Will Robot fit? Robot will fit. Okay, so we'll just go ahead and write that in. Like, to me, that's going to be really cool to use, like, in a song, right? Like, as a background element. <laughs> I love my JP8000, but I'm a generic bitch. I think the JP8000 sounds really great, too, for a certain type of sound. But for me, um, you know, it's just, it, I guess that era of trance music just isn't my nostalgia, the way certain other things are. And for me, I love this sort of low res glassy digital thing that you don't get um the jp8000 in some sense sounds better right like it's and it's much easier to program but it's a little less complicated too you don't get as many cool sort of stuff that you can do with it so for better or worse i decided to keep the d50 and put my jp8000 up for sale on reverb and it's still up for sale now actually um 
Can you wave sequence one of the loops? Well, no, not really. So I won't save this, but all I have to do is move this to um, structure six. And you can hear we could go through these loops. Wow, I thought, I thought that would work. Let's go ahead and just go to a new patch here. And, um... You basically have wave sequences built into the D50 where you have different samples sequenced out. So you could take that you know take that but then have the um the key tracking off and adjust the course tune so whatever you're playing you've got that and then when you go into key mode you could go and increment this over to a split and then have the upper tone have a completely different sort of sound. So we could bring that over and just the key follow here. And then with the low lower key, oh. I don't know why I'm not hearing that, but essentially what you could do, Dub, is you can have like the left hand have that kind of wave sequence going and in the right hand you could do something else. So I showed how to do it in the uh, three hour tutorial. Um, if you skip, uh, it's all time stamps. So if you go to like pretty hate machine wave sequencing, um, patch, whatever, that'll like show you what you can do with it. And I used it in my patch, uh, the first patch here uh, before wave state, this guy. due to those types of sounds um yeah the 880 is probably built better i was a little let down by the build quality of the jp8000 that i had i don't know if they're all like that what is that joystick for like wave stations have vector synthesis yeah i actually like totally ignored the um joystick in my tutorials but what we could do is actually this one will work okay so we've got this brass patch and if I go to um, partial balance and I select these, you can control the balance of the upper or lower. Um. So that's a way that you can crossfade between the four different layers going on. Which is a great way, like, so again, you can pull up one of my patches here. Here's it initialized. But if you move this around, you might find a place where it sounds better. I actually kind of like it here. A little bit better. Or even here, where you're getting a lot of that PCM sample. Now we're almost getting that sort of lo-fi sort of tone. But you get a little bit of brightness from the virtual analog. So yeah, it's just a way that you can interact with the sounds. And unfortunately in 1987, that's basically all most people had was when they turned on the D50, they just loaded up the basic presets and they messed around with uh, just moving the joystick around. And that was about as close to sound design as they could get. And 
to my knowledge, no one has done as in-depth of a tutorial on the D50 on YouTube yet. And so my goal was uh, to spend uh, a lot of hours learning how to use a D50 and then putting together a video with over 4,000 edits to hopefully make it so that people could get these sounds and actually enjoy this incredible synthesizer because it's so special. It sounds so good. And uh, by the way, you, this all works with the software and I think the software sounds really good compared to this. I, I do. I think my boy Synthpunk was here earlier saying that the software does not sound as good. For me, it doesn't have to sound exactly there, but it, if it just gets close so that people can enjoy these types of sounds. This is a patch I called JP8000 pad. It's using pulse width modulation on the sawtooth. Which, and a little bit of sawtooth LFO action. Just sounds really great. This is the most like sort of stereotypical D50 thing. Yeah, that actually that big grime bass sounds awesome. Oh, that's nasty. Um, it's funny how people's usernames actually kind of sound like a good name for the patches. Let me catch up here. Um, Machine Storm, you have a breadth of musical knowledge that I do not know about. Bit off topic, but opinion on Roland Cloud. Will I lose a lot or is it good? Have no space, no studio anymore. Looking Looks like free or $199 a year for best cloud option. Uh, for me, I think the Roland Cloud is... Okay, so I don't like the subscription model. You know, uh, but... The fact that you can get all of those really incredible sounds, I think it's, I think it's pretty great. Um, I'm an Omnisphere guy. I always probably will be. I just think Omnisphere is great, but $500 is a lot to drop on a product, and there's a lot of competitive stuff out there. Serum and Pigments both hanging around 200 bucks, And <laughs> 200 bucks for a year with everything that's in the rolling cloud, I mean, it's pretty good. Uh, the D50 VST by itself, I think, is about 150 So if you think you were going to buy that, you know, the Roland Cloud would be a possibility. Um, <laughs> with three G uh, JP8000s, you're able to play a super, super, super saw now. That's for sure. Um, yeah, there's videos of people selling patches, not making them. Yeah, I wanted to really open up the synth and make it so that you didn't have any more gatekeepers. Like people could actually make their own sounds with the synth because it is complicated. Like the structures and bias and chases. I showed how to do chases tonight. I didn't even go near bias. It's a cool feature, but things like that are really intimidating about this synth. But I wanted to make it so that everybody felt that they could get it because once you've got it, it's not hard. You can go fast. You've seen how quickly we were able to come up with a bunch of really cool patches. Um, Superwave P8, that's funny. Rolling Cloud pissed me off. I was a Spectrosonics guy, but UV UVI converted me partially. Yeah, UVI makes a lot of great stuff too. Oh, this actually sounds really good up high here. Like if you're making sort of trancey type stuff. It's almost a shame I said bass. I mean, it is badass down here. But it sounds really good up here. I might <laughs> borrow this.
this and use it as a polyphonic patch later on and adjust it because it sounds really good. I mean, that's awesome. I love that. So anyways, guys, we have run a little bit later than I usually intend to, but I just wanted to really make this a big, bad sound designer dream uh, for you guys to see what's going on. And um, so, yeah, I uh, really appreciate everybody for hanging out this late who's hung around the whole stream. Thank you, guys. Um, yeah, let's see here. Is there a software equivalent of the PG-1000? That shit costs as much as a D50. Yes. So if you go to the D50 tutorial video that's linked in the description, that tutorial has a um, link to the controller.org panel that you can get, which basically works as like a VST in your... Um, in your DAW that lets you control the D50. So you don't actually need a PG-1000. And technically you could do all this stuff directly from the panel. And it's not that bad because you can use the joystick as a potentiometer, as a slider, but it is nice to have the PG-1000. So I suggest either the PG-1000, the D-Tronics uh, controller, which is just a modern reproduction of the PG-1000. It's a little smaller, but it's a lot cheaper. And then an even better option, something like an iPad running the controller.org panel for the D50. You could also just Google controller.org with no O's or uh, E's in there. Um, yeah. So anyways, guys, if you haven't yet, please like this video. Subscribe to the channel if you like this type of stuff. We got a lot of really cool new synths coming up. I just got today a Polyvox all the way from Ukraine and it is giant and gorgeous and beautiful and cannot wait to check that synth out. It is something really special. So that's gonna be a really great stream when we get the opportunity to check that out. So anyways, I am Vulture Culture, love and light bitches. I'll see you next Wednesday at nine.